Greetings, children. So, what we have learned so far in Ishwar and the Storyteller is, as you can see in the picture, Mahendran is listening to the stories with rapt attention and Ishwaran sitting on the floor telling him a beautiful, beautifully fabricated woven story very creatively utilizing his gesticulation and his storytelling art. So right from narrating the fallen tree, he is now going to tell him a story of an insane elephant, the elephant who escaped the timber yard and was maddened and was on rampage to create a mayhem, you see, destruction. So let us start. Okay, he says, I'm here on page number 14. The place I come from is famous for timber. Timber is wood. Ishwaran would begin. There is a richly wooded forest all around. So he narrates his place where he belongs to. The logs are hauled onto the lorries by elephants. As you can see in the picture, elephants for a long time have been utilized for um, carrying the load, for transporting heavy objects, right? Uh, they are huge, well-fed beasts. When they turn wild, even the most experienced Mahal, the Mahal is usually a caretaker, a trainer of that elephant, whom the elephant knows very well and can recognize and can take commands from him. Even a well-trained Mahath is not able to control them. After this prologue, Ishwaran would launch into an elaborate anecdote involving an elephant as a central character here. Only for some time. Okay, Prologue is the introduction of his story right now one day a tusker tusker here is referred to the mad elephant one day a tusker escaped from the timber yard and began to roam about stamping on bushes tearing up wild creepers and breaking branches at will you know sir how an elephant behaves when it goes mad. Ishwaran would get so caught up in the excitement of his own story that he would get up from the floor and jump about stamping his feet in emulation of the mad elephant. Hmm. In this paragraph, one more new word, emulation. Emulation is the imitation of something, copying something. Now, what does Ishwaran do to make his story more effective so that his audience can really have the, can feel the effect of it? You see, his stories really comes alive. And how does he bring his stories coming alive to his audience is by using the voice modulation and his body language, his gesticulation while he tells the story of an insane elephant who was destroying everything he would stand up from his place and start stamping the feet against the ground just to imitate a mad elephant that is uh, another feature of a good storyteller right it is only to create the effect of his story the elephant reached the outskirts of our town this is very important paragraph children perhaps you can put a tick mark you have a question related to this paragraph on the back the elephant reached the outskirts of our town breaking the fences down like matchsticks he would continue it came into the main road and smashed all the stalls selling fruits so not only the wild creepers and the branches of the tree, but also the street vendors. He ruined all the belongings and the property of the, the street vendors. The mud pots and the clothes and everything. People ran helter and skelter in panic. 
panic stricken people run here and there i taught you this meaning of this phrase helter and skelter i think last year that means here and there right okay the elephant now entered a school ground where children were playing breaking through the brick wall not only the trees and the street vendors but also the elephant using his might even broke the school brick wall and entered the school premises right all the boys ran into classrooms and uh yes into the classrooms and shut the doors tight the bees to grunted and wandered about pulling out the football goal post tearing down the volleyball net kicking and flattening the drum drum kept for water and uprooting the shrubs so whichever was handy perhaps for the elephant or came on his way he kept on destructing everything the volleyball net perhaps on the playground the drums that were kept for drinking water right and the football goal post anything that came on the way was destroyed meanwhile all the teachers had climbed up to the terrace of the school building from there they helplessly watched the depredations of the elephant depredations refers to the destruction the mayhem which was being created and caused by this insane elephant how to control this elephant who can calm it down and prevent the destruction stop that there was not a soul below on the ground everything as if was deserted people hid themselves behind the doors and shut the doors tightly so that the elephant could not push them and enter the classrooms also the teachers and the other elders were on the rooftop of the school somewhere on the terrace there was not a single soul not a single person to be found on the ground the streets were emptied out as if the inhabitants of the entire town had suddenly disappeared children this description uh, this description which is given here you need to imagine these are the word pictures created by uh, the writer for you to just imagine what must have been the spectacle what must have been the sight at that time just imagine Uh, many a times we see the elephants along with the mahout and uh, some other people walking around and the elephant comes into the streets and you know they ask for food and ask for uh, money the coins the notes and some people also give food offer the food to elephants but imagine that mammoth beast going crazy going destroying things so this is what the writer wants you to imagine okay that is why this word pictures are given to you now in the next paragraph i was studying in the junior class okay now he is involving himself the storyteller involves himself as the savior of all let's see what does he do i was studying in the junior class at that time and was watching the whole drama from the rooftop i don't know what came over me suddenly i grabbed the cane from the hands of one of the teachers and ran down the stairs into the open it seems he is is praising himself he is putting himself into the central character now elephant is no more there but he is there and as an overpowering character who's going to pacify and control the elephant and has emerged as the bravest self present there at that point of time okay the elephant seeing him grunting and menacingly swung a branch of a tree which it held in its trunk so what was that it was a warning sign from an elephant swinging a branch from one of a fallen tree or perhaps he would have broken a branch and just swung it yes hurled it 
in front of the small child, small Ishwaran who was standing there. What else did it do? It stamped its feet, kicking up a lot of mud and dust, which is again another warning sign that if you do not behave, perhaps you are finished. I will run you over. Right? That was a warning sign from the elephant. It looked frightening. Of course, it must have been frightening for a small child. But I moved slowly towards it. Stick in hand. People were watching the scene hypnotized. You see, hypnotized that is with fixed attention as if they were controlled by some sort of power from nearby housetops. Because they were unable to come down, they all climbed their housetops, their terraces, their rooftops and they were hypnotized with gaping mouth. What is going to happen? How this small child will survive? Not only survive, but he would calm down the elephant. Okay, the elephant looked at me red-eyed. Hmm. Ready to rush towards me. It lifted its trunk and trumpeted loudly. That was a sort of victorious noise that he has made. At that, mo at that moment, please underline this. This is important. I moved forward. What did the child do? He moved forward and mustering all my force, mustering that is collecting, gathering all my might and the power, waked its third toenail on the quick. The beast looked stunned for a moment. Then it shivered from head to foot and collapsed. Till then you have to underline. So how did the child control the maddened beast? It hit its third toenail with... Yeah, sorry for the interruption. Um, yes, so what we were talking about was um, Ishwaran as a small child coming down and controlling uh, without any help of any elder one, a maddened elephant. Well, practically such things are possible only in the stories and not in practical life. Yes, so let's see. Now, what is going to be Mahendran's response to it? At this point, Ishwaran would leave the story unfinished and get up mumbling. See, he would be muttering something. Oh yes, I have to now go and cook something for you, sir. So what he would do? He will leave the audience under the spell. You see, he wants the audience to uh, think about what will happen now. What is going to be the climax? What would have happened to the small child and the elephant both? You see, he is living with that curiosity in his audience's mind. And he would say, I'll be back after uh, lighting the gas and warming up the dinner. Mahendra, who had been listening with rapt attention, would be left hanging somewhere in the limbo. He would just think of the story. And nothing else. So this is another quality of um, Ishwaran. To grab the attention. Yes. And leave them with the curiosity. So even if the story is whether done or not done yet. The listeners remain under the effect. Under the spell. Cast by the storyteller. Okay. When he returned. Ishwaran would not pick up the thread of the story right away. Mahendra would have to remind him that the conclusion was still pending. Well, once he reminds, what he will say? Well, a veterinary doctor was summoned, summoned here will, ordered, to revive, that means to recover, the animal. Ishwaran would shrug casually. You see, he would be talking in a very casual manner, raising his shoulder. Oh, what can happen? The elephant was recovered by a veterinarian. An animal doctor. Two days later, then it was led away by its mahout to the jungle. And it was sent back to the jungle. That was the full stop to his story. Well, how did you manage to do that, Ishwaran? How did you bring down the beast and its temper? 
that is the next question when he wants to know this he would give all credit to the japanese art i think sir karate or it is named as jiu jitsu i had read about it somewhere it temporarily paralyzes the nervous system you see all right so this is ishwaran's way of telling the story he does not only tell story his audience never gets bored with his story or he doesn't talk in monotonous way but he knows how to grab their attention and leave them somewhere in the curiosity to know more about the stories that he has to tell them right so it is it is one of a good feature of a good storyteller we leave this video up to here and then in the next video we will be going to one more story told by ishwaran till then keep healthy and keep learning